So can I build a better render farm than Pixar with just some of these? Find out. Render Farm is a bunch of computers working together to generate like a 3D animation. So a lot of big movie studios, uh, VFX artists, and really anyone doing 3D animation, they'll want to reduce the rendering time it takes to make a 3D video. So the way they do this is get a bunch of computers, network them together, and they all render little bitty chunks. So little like individual images of a scene, of an animation or an effect for a movie. And then they take all these and put them together. So Blender is one of these softwares and it supports generating, you know, creating a render farm with it. So I had a thought. What if instead of buying all that, I just use Blender, throw it on every computer I have and see what I can get. Let's do the world's jankiest render farm. Hey, I forgot to add this in the initial recording, but if you want to skip over me talking about all the computers and just see the tutorial, go to this time code. It'll be up here. Uh, yeah. So let's begin by introducing you to all the uh, PCs that are going to be used in this render farm. The first is the HP Z400 workstation. It comes with an Intel Xeon W3565 that runs at 3.2 gigahertz. And I updated it with an SSD and a Radeon 550. One of the computers I have is the Surface Pro 4. It's the really low end spec model, so I wouldn't expect too much great performance out of it. Um, it has an Intel Core M3 6Y30 that uh, turbos up to 1.5 gigahertz. Um, it's all still Intel integrated graphics. I think it kind of is a representational of a newer like Windows tablet that you could buy. So I have two Lenovo IdeaPads, uh, 110S's. What I've done with this one is it's got a pretty poultry Intel Celeron, but one has Linux installed, uh, specifically Ubuntu, the latest version of that. And the other one has Windows on it. So this one, I'm gonna be able to show a comparison between using Linux and using Windows. Up next, we have the Sony Vio VGN-P588E. This is like a little uh, netbook. So this has an Intel Atom Z520, 1.33 gigahertz. It has an integrated Intel thing. This thing is not fast. I feel kind of bad for using it because it's not designed to be a Blender rendering station at all. But I figure, hey, let's try to simulate something that's like I pulled a netbook out of the trash and this is what you get. So one of the interesting things about this notebook in particular is that it can't actually run this 64-bit instruction set. So even though the chip itself is Intel 64-bit, you actually have to use the 32-bit version of Linux to get it to work. We have a bunch of single board computers. They vary from the various generations of the Raspberry Pi. It's one of the more interesting boards in this is the Gizmo 2. Originally made by Gizmosphere, but they don't exist anymore. So good luck getting any support for this guy if you happen to find him. There is actually a fairly, what was active community on the Element 14 boards. Really, it's almost been dead silent for at least the last couple of years, so yeah. Don't, if you find one of these, unless it's an amazing deal, don't, don't bother with it. So this is my Raspberry Pi 4. It has a Broadcom BCM2711, um, and it goes up to 1.5 gigahertz. Now, if you're gonna do Blender rendering on it, you need to have a heat sink on it. That being said, it is fairly competent. It's probably more around the uh, area of the idea pads. So this is the Raspberry Pi 2. I have a hat on it, but that's not necessary. It's just a relay hat for a different project. It's got the Broadcom BCM2836. When you get this much older in the Raspberry Pi catalog, you really are hampered by the speed of the processor. So it's only 900 megahertz. This is a Raspberry Pi 1 Model B. Um, it's got the Broadcom BCM2835 and it's only a 700 megahertz. This one is like painful to use. Like it's literally takes like five minutes to boot up. Um, it's definitely not gonna give you some great frames for rendering. 
So the first step of actually starting this project is you gotta go install Blender on all the devices and you gotta add the network rendering add-on as well. So let's begin with that. Oh, yeah, I gotta, so I'm gonna set up my, all my computers here so I can start getting them connected together and put up a little network for all of this. So one of the things you should know is that every tutorial you're going to find is going to tell you, hey, use VNC client to look at all your machines remotely so you don't have to hook up a monitor to them. Well, I think that's kind of BS because you're going to have to hook up a monitor the first time anyway. And the second, and the second reason is that every VNC client I've had it always kind of fails out after about like 10, 15 minutes. So you're gonna have to disconnect and reconnect and do all sorts of stuff doing VNC. Or you just get it all set up with the monitor that you plug in and out. So yeah, just a note. All right, so now we have everything set up and ready to run. So the only thing we have to do is just click the, click the button that says send animate on network. So, so we're ready to go and the only thing we have to do is click the button that says animate on network. Bam. Then from there, we click Open Master Monitor, and then we're ready to go. Rendering away. So we had our second death on the network, and that's this little VIO laptop. Uh, what happened is it comes up with an error, network unresolved, so it's not able to like save the pictures, or it's not able to just connect up with the master for whatever reason, so yeah. Okay, so there's this problem I keep having, and with some of the machines, in this case the Raspberry Pi 4, I keep getting this error called broken pipe. So I know a pipe is like, um, in Bash basically, it's, it connects one command, the output from one command as the input to another command, but I don't know what that means in this context. So... If there's like a Blender expert out there, feel free to drop a comment down below. This is sad to say, but it also appears that the Raspberry Pi 1, Mr. Old Bones here himself, has died of a pipe error. So I guess, um, yeah, that's not surprising, but unfortunate all the same. So to install Blender, the first thing you need to do is go to the Blender website. You'll want to go to the downloads page and go to get the 2.79 version. Um, I recommend using all the same version if possible because I found some issues if you try to go outside of the versions with each other. So go down the list and pick the uh, Windows 64 bit and then wait for it to download. After it's finished download, click install and walk through the installation wizard. Click finish, and then navigate to the uh, Blender in the program files and just launch the program. After the program is open, go to File, User Preferences. In the User Preference window, click Add-on in the top bar, and then in the search menu on the left-hand side, click Net, and then Blender Network Render should be one of the options that's available, and then just click the little checkbox. From here, you'll have this menu pop up on the right hand side whenever you look at rendering and it'll give you the option of client, master, and slave. So your master 
is a server that hands out all the jobs for the render. The slave is a render for the master, so it just gets jobs from the master and then renders them. So the client is the computer that has the job on it, and it's the one that you're using to make all the edits. And then the client sends it to the master. The master then sends it to all the slaves, and then it gets rendered onto the master. One of the cool things that you can do with Blender is you can actually open Blender as three separate applications and each one can be a different user. So one can be a master, one can be a slave, and one can be the client and they can all be on the same computer. That means you can use your main workstation as a client and a master to do rendering on there. To install Blender on Linux, the method I'm going to recommend doing is going to the website and downloading it. You can do it through an apt-get through a repository, but I found those, for whatever reason, don't include the net renderer. So the easiest way to deal with it is just to get the uh, tar archive from the Blender website. So first thing you need to do is go to the Blender website and go to the Downloads tab, like you did with the Windows. Then go to Set 2.79. I'm going to go to the tar archive file for Blender. Download it. After it's completed downloading, then you just want to basically extract it. So here I download it to my desktop and extract it there. I use all GUI kind of interface stuff just because I'm Extract the files. So it'll take a hot minute to extract the files. But then after that's done, just open up the folder with the extracted files in it. Then from there, I just use the uh, built-in just open terminal here function. And what you're gonna do is a dot forward slash, uh, then blender. Then you want to go to File, User Preferences, then click the add-on, and then in the search menu, type in Net and find the Net Render add-on. Then switch to Render Engine to Network Render, and then set it up as either a Client, Master, or Slave. So I've collected all the render times from the master server and now it's time to draw some conclusions about what the best configuration for Blender is going to be. I started out with creating a simple scene with simple lighting elements. Then I created a 250 frame animation that the only containing element is one camera movement for the whole thing. One of the things I wanted to look at with the two idea pads is since they're similar hardware is to see which one's better using Windows or Linux for Blender rendering. It's pretty clear from the data that using a Linux OS is much better than using Windows. We had about 32.45% better improvement overall using just the same hardware but different operating systems. So if you want to save a crap load of time, do a Linux machine. So one of the things I wanted to determine with this test was to see what was actually the best bang for your buck purchase as far as like getting a rendering PC would be. So surprisingly, the Raspberry Pi 2 took the cake in this category with the Raspberry Pi 2 having a per frame render cost of just $2.31. So the way this was calculated was I took the purchase cost of the computer and then divided that by how many frames they rendered for this. My workstation PC did 116 frames and would cost approximately $300. My Surface Pro did 59 frames and can be found on eBay 
as a refurb for roughly $300 as well. Then I did the idea pads, which were roughly $100 when I bought them from a Micro Center, and they did 28 and 19 respectively. Then my Gizmo 2, which was like a $100 board, and that you can't really find anymore, so it's not really worthwhile to put on the table, but it got around 13 frames and ultimately the Pi 2 got the same amount of frames generated. Um, while you can't purchase that one anymore, you can purchase the Pi 4, which is a lot faster for $35. While I did use a Pi 4 in the test and it is very clearly faster, I couldn't actually get it to work. So if you really wanted to make a great conclusion about it, you'd have to do some configuring and some stuff with that. So that's not gonna be a truly hands-off approach or a hands-off thing to deal with. So if you want to make a conclusion from this, if you look purely at the cost per dollar, using Raspberry Pis is actually a good solution. Um, I was really surprised by this. I did not think that the Raspberry Pi would be a good solution. I looked at a lot of forum posts and they always say Raspberry Pi clusters aren't really good for much, but apparently Blender Farm is an exception to this rule. Um, I would say though, if it was my money and I had to go buy something, I would probably go and buy just a better workstation computer. One thing I didn't test with my data was actually putting Linux on my workstation computer. It runs Windows 10, so I'd probably gain a good extra 30%. And having a bunch of Raspberry Pis laying around isn't really that useful compared to having a better workstation computer that I'd have at my house. So yeah, for my money, I would buy a workstation. But if you may decided to go out and buy a bunch of Pis, that would be pretty cool and make a pretty cool like project. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll continue making more videos like this. Thanks.